Are you satisfied with your understanding of sustainability? If you are not, imagine a journey together, a pluralistic one, with academia, innovators, startups, NGOs, all looking for solutions to the greatest challenge of our time. My name is Samuel Ettini, and this is the Sustainability Journey. Welcome to a new episode. Today, we are going to discuss and going in depth in the world of finance, in the world of regeneration, and the world of sustainability. And we do it with somebody that has been at the forefront also of the B Corp movement and working in, in the finance sector for many years. So it's a pleasure to host here, Jasmina Vucina. Thank you, Jasmina, for being with us today. Thank you, Samuali, for inviting me. I'm very, very happy to be here and share this time with you and with people out there listening to us. Fantastic, fantastic, Jasmina. And before we go in depth in the discussion, we want to know a bit more about you. Who is Jasmina? What is your sustainability journey and how you have worked in the finance and the env environment? Well, if I may go back a little bit in time, uh, back in time, when I was studying at the university, I was very interested in human rights, social development, and in general, I just, you know, wanted to save the world, quote unquote, when you are 20 years old and you have all this energy and say, okay, all these problems and things happening and I, I need to do something about it. So I collaborated with many NGOs. I was very into volunteering for many years. And then I saw that it was so difficult to get financial resources for the NGOs. And I started thinking about how can I bring all this money that is out there and help this sector. So I decided to do a master's in international finance. And that's how I got into finance. Of course, it was a very traditional way of looking into finance. And I said, okay, this is good, but it's not for me. So I need to do something about it. So I started researching and traveling and working in the private sector, public sector, as I mentioned before, also with NGOs, I decided that I needed to work to help bring this capital that is out there into people that are trying to do good for the planet and the environment and society, of course. So I just decided to follow that path. And every step of the way that I've tried to, to do and accomplish, I have that in mind. I, I, I think blended finance it's a resource that it's worth looking into. And definitely when you bring the financial resources to a project that has purpose, I believe that the result is it's amazing. Thank you, Jasmina, for that. It's also a common journey of some of the our guests in the past that they have shown. So they start in the finance world and then they have the Eureka moment. They they say that and it's a sentence that I so it's not for me. We need to do something different. And really, you have worked towards that, towards this regeneration sustainability. And one role that I think you have impersonated and you have really worked on that is the becoming chief sustainability officer, now advisor in a board of a bank, the Reti Bank. So can you explain the strategy you know, that you, how you have worked on that, spreading the principle of responsible banking, how you have changed you know, the narrative in that system? I always wanted to be involved with the part of the finance that has values. So basically social banking, values-based banking, that was all the way my speciality. And I was invited to be involved in this project that started around seven years ago. They wanted to actually build a bank from scratch, a bank that would be 100% sustainable, 100% positive impact in society and the environment. So I believe actually when that project started, PRB, the principle for responsible banking, were not even created. It was created 2019. So after they created that, the UN created that UNIPFI, we thought, okay, we, I, we need to be a part of this because my belief is that when you have partnerships and when you collaborate with different sectors, the journey, it's easier and the result is better. Collaboration for me is a key point for everything, everything in life actually. So we decided that we can't do it alone. You can't, as a bank, you can't really go on that path by yourself. You need partnerships. So 
being involved with Unipify, the principle for responsible banking, also Unit Global Compact, for example. We are also a partner. I, I think it was very important to be a partner now of Net Zero Banking Alliance. Also PCAF, which is Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financial, this methodology that helps banks measure your carbon footprint and your portfolio, which is very important. Also, there's a partnership that is similar, but it's for biodiversity. So you actually have all this help in, in with the methodologies helping to, to measure what is the impact that you are making in biodiversity and what, for example, services you need to, dependencies you need to, to pay attention to, because at the end of the day, we know that we need nature for everything, right? So strategic partnerships are two words that I really, really like. And I think it's very important when you want to be part of the change to have strategic partnerships with change makers and organizations that can actually get you there and will help you find a way to build actually something that will be sustainable and regenerative, of course. Fantastic. Just mean it's really important and how you see also banks built from scratch with these social values and work. I think in the podcast we have discussed a lot and we have given voice to many change making in the big space and also you have walked that path. So why how this process was for the bank that usually is not something that you associate with a B Corp certified company. So and why was it important to to, to get the certification? When building all the strategy of how to get the bank to be a change maker and be, you know, really something that would change or that can help change the way society and the environment now is being impacted. I looked into all the possibilities, right? And as I was talking before with the partnership, I also encountered that being a B Corp certified bank would be very important. Why? Because when you actually work towards being a B Corp, you the first thing that you have to do is do like a, an impact assessment, right? You just go to the website of B Corporation and then you do this impact assessment. And then it actually gives you the guide on how you can become a bank that will have structure and will believe in the five pillars that they actually are trying to change into businesses because the whole idea is to change the business so we can change the economy. So I think, for example, governance. So the pillars, if I can just uh, remind, it's governance, workers, customers, environment, and community. For a bank, what is very important? Customers, right? But maybe that's like a traditional bank. If you want to build a sustainable bank, you need to think about governance. That's very important. And it's one of the things that I've been very, very sharp with. Get my my board of advisors into you know, starting the governance from the board and spread it on the whole bank. So we had an initiative, for example, with the GABB, which is the Global Alliance for Banking on Values. We did, it's called Governance Academy. So the, the whole board was involved. It was six months, a program that, that lasted for six months. And that was very interesting and very important. And And from there down, I think governance in general, how you not only structure in theory, but in practice, how you do it is very important. And then how you engage with your workers in the bank. Of course, we hired in the beginning people that, yes, knew what sustainability was, but didn't ever work in a sustainable bank and did, did not ha- know how to do it. So you have to create this culture inside first so you can then create strategies and then you can create, you know, based on your business plan, everything that you are going to do and how you're going to actually achieve that engagement. And of course, with customers, it's very important for us to engage with them. And, and environment and community, that's actually, you know, the, yeah, the, the last most important thing for us. We have created different programs to get involved with the community and all the, the lending program is based in how we can impact the environment positively. So the work is, uh, the bank is working towards this enhancement in the, in the assessment. And it gave us a guide on how to actually become a company slash a bank 
that can that can be changed inside. I mean, even if we were not changing from the beginning, but we needed to create something that was actually very tangible. So I thought it was very important to have this certification. And also, if I can just add something else, it's not only working towards the assessment, but just having the culture and being involved with all different talking. We have, I have made, made also partnership with other people working with different B Corps, and then you can be in contact with people that are already certified. And it's just very important to, to, to talk about challenges and, and, and have these discussions with other people that are, are being certified already or working towards. So it's a, it's a whole world that is very interesting for us and for me speci- specifically. And no, fantastic. Jasmina, you are confirming many of the discussion we had, also my results. So the power of the network, the recognition, also the path and the, the good journey that is the B Corp certification through the assessment and how to shape and how to look at the differences. So it's really something that comes out all the time. I discuss with people that is the power no, of this certification. So it's it's really an important journey that companies should, I think, also try in their quest towards sustainability and also being more regenerative. And But I want to ask now about the challenges a bit, because we usually, opportunities are wonderful, but also it's not a walk in the path. The certification is not a walk in the path. And I'm, I can assure that, I mean, can, I can be sure that integrating sustainability into financial system, the financial world is not that easy. Uh, sometimes they consider, so how, which strategies have you used to overcome the, the traditional hurdles that they be, especially in your sector? Well, I believe that everything should go from inside to I, out, from in, the inside, sorry, to the outside. So if you want to create financial products that could be sustainable or could help creating a more sustainable world, you need to be sustainable within, right? So it was a challenge, and this is something that I was already <laughs> talking in, the, in, in, in my previous comment. When you, when you have your workers and you are able to uh, bring people uh, to the team that not necessarily have all the knowledge that at least you would like them to have in order to believe what you can actually do as a worker in inside the company, inside the bank, to help clients, for example, move towards more sustainability practices. So it was a challenge, I have to say, <laughs> to bring everybody on board. In the beginning, it was not easy, even though the bank was created to be, you know, from scratch, sustainable. And the business plan, it is, the business plan is, is based in, that, in those thoughts. But... It was not easy to to get everybody on board and everybody to a point where, okay, now we can actually provide with services that would be definitely sustainable. So I created an academy inside the bank and we offered education to, to from the board to, you know, anybody that wanted to be involved and also to customers because we believe that uh, the impact that we can actually create as well as a bank is to engage in our customers, specifically corporate customers, to get into the carbonize and to get into being involved within this journey. Even helping them becoming B Corps, that was also one of our premises and, and work with them, work with all our customers, engage with them and help them being part of the ecosystem inside the bank. It's really a, a powerful part, a powerful work. And you are, since we have discussed about challenges, you are a leader who is not scared of taking mountains and trying to really challenge the system even more. I was recently, we were in Amsterdam to the, to the convention for the Big for Good Leaders. And I was impressed by your commitment and your new challenge and work with UNA and about an initiative to scale up, if I recall correctly, financial services for women. So what is it? What is our, What are you trying even now to push more the boundaries of your work and uh, your achievements? Well, I'm very happy to talk about UNA. So thinking about the challenges that I'm, I had being a leader at a bank, that it's a digital bank, 
I was always leaning into financial inclusion. I believe financial inclusion is the key to actually spread the potential that we can have as people and community to be able to have a greater impact in the planet. So everybody, I'm very interested in everybody that is not bankerized, that have not opportunities, have had not opportunities in the past, not only because of physical barriers, but for, this, for example, people with disabilities or even women. So over the years, I have been very interested in the, in the women's movement and how we can actually, as a group, support each other and overcome the patriarchy that we actually live at the moment that it's really important to to collaborate, you know, one with the other. I'm not talking about exclusion because I'm all about inclusion. So I think we should all be together, women supporting men and men supporting women to create a more balanced world. So I decided to create an initiative that it's called UNA and it 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 comes back from when I was a student at the university and I was just talking about I wanted to do some finance studies. And I was thinking about going abroad to study. And I started saving, saving, saving my money. And I was living in Venezuela where the currency was not very stable. And I actually had passed for two moments in which, in where the economy was, you know, had encountered some struggles. So I couldn't actually achieve my goal, even though I worked very hard. So I said, okay, I need to save my money in a currency that is le- less vol- volatile. For example, the US dollar. So I went to different banks in, in the US and nobody wanted to open a bank account for me because I was a, a student at the university. I didn't work. And well, I did work, but not as a, in a company or had, you know, I was a student basically. And I said, okay, this, you, how come this be? I want to do something. I want to help. And, and, and nobody wants to open a bank account for me. And then most recently, 2017, I moved to Europe and I, the first thing, what you have to do to be in the system, you need to open a bank account. And it was, it was very hard for me to open a bank account as well. And I started researching and looking into the logarithms and the system that actually create this decision. And, and I understand there's compliance and due diligence that needs to be, of course, taken care of. And me being in a bank, I know from the inside what you can actually do and you shouldn't do as a bank but with with all these regulations that we have created we are excluding people without knowing it so i'm very advocating for getting into a balance where you have regulations you have compliance but you can you also look into people that need financial services but not necessarily can you know, get into all the, yeah, the, the things that the, the, the banks actually need for you to open a bank account. So at the moment, open finance, open banking, of course, fintech, digital banks are neo banks, all this movement. It's very important. I think financial inclusion will, will get into the highest in a couple of years, maybe the top five years. And UNA, it's, it's a creation that it's working for financial inclusion and trying to close in the gender gap in finance, which actually, by the way, according to UN, it's 300 years, which is a lot. It's also all about partnerships and collaboration. And UNA has become, it started as a group of women getting together and talking about the difficulties of being bankerized, for example or different challenges or different experience, some good, some bad, uh, in different countries. And then advoca- advocating for all this change of the bias. And then now it has become a startup that will eventually become an app and where you will include, we will include financial services and we will be able to, to offer financial services for women that for any reason encounter difficulties when entering the financial system. I can't talk much about it, but we can have another podcast eventually when after I launch Una officially. But but it, it it's it's about that. Yeah. No, oh, fantastic. It's really a critical area where we are sitting 
we work with communities and we know the struggle of groups, women, also young guys that they have entrepreneurial idea about the banking system. It's without guarantees, without an history, cannot even lend a single shilling to them. So it's it's so important the the the, the work that you are doing. And please, I'm be very welcome to see where the journey will uh, is is taking you. And of course, I, I really urge you also invite you not to focus just maybe in the areas, of course, of Europe or others, but also look at our emerging markets and war. So we are open for partnership. And, you know, I really want to ask, especially you mentioned that before, that in the next five years, we, we will see a transformation, a revolution. So uh, which are the emerging trends that for you are promising for more a sustainable future, a more regenerative economy? And in the finance world, of course, as you mentioned, but even generally as, as, as a business leader. Yeah, you know, you need to keep keep on moving and reading and thinking and being where this is getting because it's moving very, very fast. So I think that we should move from a system that is an extractive system. So take, make, waste into a system that would regenerate the economy, the planet, the society in general. So, of course, circular economy is something that is there for many years and it has helped us creating conscious with recycle, reduce, reuse. But I think we need to go further. So, for example, restore, renew, replenish is something that I believe uh, regenerative economics bring and bring as, bring something as a tool, as a, an element that I think will be very interesting and regenerative Economies and even finance, I believe that it's it's even more more important than sustainable finance, if we can call it that way. Because for sustainability, when we thought about it, you know, many years ago, it's like okay, we need to create something that will be able to 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 be sustained over time by doing little harm for the future generations. But sorry, but personally, I don't want to do little harm. I want to do no harm. So I believe in regenerative economics. I think it's it's we need to aim to do no harm at all and lead and actually I believe this can this will lead us to you know more benefits in general and a renewal of the economy, the society, and the way business plans are created. I believe everybody should take into account how we can regenerate instead of degenerate so it's my dilemma all the time the generation versus regeneration so let's just all go to the other you know this part of the balance so it's a uh, regeneration for sure and it's really important that paradigm shift you now from the extractive to regenerative mode that that is how we will get out of this problem that we have also created with our a capitalistic system that they can for granted nature and the externalities that a so-called externalities when we were studying economic. I remember when I was a primary student, I remember so vividly my teacher was talking about oil and you know the the resources that we had in the planet that were you know finite or infinite. So they they always I don't know they talked about oil and gas as something that we really needed to take care of and we really needed to take care of because it's uh, it's finite. It will finish eventually and we need to, we don't know what's going to happen when it finishes. But water and nature, oh, you know, that's there for, you know, the rest of the life. We don't care. We don't have to take care of it. I remember vividly how this teacher in third grade told me that. And I, I remember how I actually, you know, I didn't understand when she was saying that, but because they said, okay, if we contaminate water, we contaminate sea, we do what actually is happening. It's just not going to be able to feed us to, you know, everything that, that, that needs all these dependencies that we have with nature. So it's also important to create conscious within the education system and, you know, our kids and, and everybody. So this is something that it really, really needs to, to go out there. And, and we need to believe that we need to regenerate the, the planet and our beliefs. And it's really important. With the post, we are trying to give voice to the many people that are trying to walk that path of regeneration and being also accountable in their choices and their, in their work. 
And on that note, we have people listening all over the world. So from Africa to Europe, to the Americas, Australia, so in Asia. So what, what do you want to leave as Jasmina, as a leader in this path to, to them as a, as a message and something maybe advice from your career on how you be more sustainable and regenerative? Yes. Well, specifically for the financial system, for example, I think that we need to embrace technology and innovation so we can create and keep working towards enhancing and facilitating reporting. I believe that AI will help us gather and improve data collection, analysis, and reporting. I think we can look into that and there's a lot of people talking about regenerative AI and me myself being involved in you know the the gender equality ecosystem I also believe it's important to start talking about logarithms that actually feed AI and 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 if they're actually equitable or no not but this is something that we need to start looking into and 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 thinking about how we're going to embrace it and accept it and work with it. I believe we need to continue to report. We should continue with the reporting. We should be very transparent. We should engage in policy advocacy, which is basically what I just uh, mentioned. We need to bring innovative financial products that will help new generations, but also in general, all of us that create an ecosystem that will be a win-win for 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 everybody. Impact investment is something that we should continue to to create and evaluate. It's a very important part of the the, the ecosystem. Stakeholder engagement, risk management. We need to start thinking about everything that is happening with our planet, and we need to manage that risk and how we're going to be able to create a safe world. Corporate governance, as I said. You know, I think all all governance, it's very important in all com- companies and banks or in general. So boards should, in my opinion, look into everything that I just spoke about. We were just talking about so many important things. And it's very important as leaders inside companies to believe that we should regenerate the economy and how we can regenerate our own companies and organizations. And in general, I think we should have our, we should as leader try to create a cultural shift for our partners and people that work with us, our teams, that to bring all this, this comments and these concepts to them and not only explain them, but explain them with a practical, practical way of thinking. Okay, these people is doing this, this organization is doing this, this is how we can do it. Because there's so many people actually doing practical things, you know, like you mentioned in Africa and in Asia and Latin America, so many people doing so many important things. And we definitely need to champion diversity and inclusion. And as you know, UNA is all for that. And we have to continue. We have to continue championing this because this is the way that we will create a more balanced, balanced human beings, balanced teams, balanced communities, balanced society. Fantastic. Thank you, Jasmina, for this message. I mean, a lot of food for thoughts for the people and the future. And it's been a pleasure and honor having you. And then I'm really grateful. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samali, for inviting me. Are you satisfied after this wonderful episode? Let's continue together our sustainability journey.